So um, there are 40 progressive groups that signed on to a letter calling for a Fox News ad boycott. It includes BLM and GLAAD and others. So this, I'm reading from the rap here, quote, the advertisers that chose to recommit to Fox News will end up being the ones to pay the reputational price, Media Matters President Angelo, Angelo Caruso said. Uh, so let me read you some more from this. Over 40 progressive organizations, including BLM, Global Network Foundation, and GLAAD, on Tuesday released an open letter urging media buyers not to buy advertisements on Fox News or risk damaging the reputation of their brands. Fox News has already made clear what you can expect from the network next year. More Tucker, more lies, more extremism, and more racism, the group says, according to an advanced copy of the letter obtained by the rap, quote, use this inflection point to quietly part ways with Fox News. The letter points to top-rated primetime programming from Tucker Carlson to make its case that the leading cable news network spent the past year pushing deadly lies about COVID-19, routinely broadcasting uh, racist rhetoric, and questioning the outcome of the election while putting democracy in peril. Let me give you some more. Media Matters for America, long a critic of Fox News, organized the open letter and assembled a coalition of progressive partners that includes the Center for American Progress Action Fund, the Center for Media and Democracy, Change, Indivisible, Move On, NARAL, N-A-R-A-L, Pro-Choice America, Sleeping Giants, Ultraviolet, and the Women's March. Quote, when the next inevitable Fox News outrage emerges, the advertisers and media buyers that stuck with Fox News during this critical decision period will need to explain why they actively chose to continue to enable Fox News's extremism. Media Matters President Angela Caruso told The Wrap Tuesday, quote, the advertisers that choose to recommit to Fox News will end up being the ones to pay the reputational price for Fox's lies and extremism. Um, so Fox News, a spokesperson from Fox News responded and said this, Fox News is about to close out its fourth consecutive year delivering new records in advertising revenue, so clearly Media Matters' predictable ongoing partisan attacks have zero impact outside of their irrelevant echo chamber on social media. Damn. All right, so there's a few things I have to say in response to this. First of all, whatever they're trying to do, it's not going to work. And the reason I say that is because any conservative outlet or any Republican outlet, or even Republican-leaning outlet, is going to have insane content. It's going to have insane content. And it's interesting, why would you pick Fox News over One American News Network and, and Newsmax, when One American News Network and Newsmax are objectively way worse than Fox News? So why would you pick Fox News? It seems like the reason they picked Fox News for the boycott is because they have higher numbers, and they're more influential. In fact, Fox News is number one in cable news, I use that term, very loosely. But like, so you're not, you're obviously not going based on the content, because if you're going based on the content, One American News and Newsmax is worse. So it's not based on content. It seems like it's based on size. But again, if you get rid of Fox News, what happens? One American News or Newsmax steps up, all the eyeballs go to that, and you're back in the same place, if not a worse place. So what are you going to do? You're going to call for those to get banned too? They probably will. But the point is, there's no way you're ever going to ban all conservative talkers or all Republican outlets. That's not going to happen. Republicans are one of two major political parties in this country. They're not going anywhere, no matter how much you try to do stuff like this. So the first point is that it's so impractical and silly. It's the dumbest possible way to fight back in the culture war and the political war. The second thing about it is this. Look, it's a shortcut in the dialogue. That's what Media Matters is trying to do here. That's what those 40 progressive organizations are trying to do here. It's cheating. And it makes you look like whiny little bitches. Like, oh, ban them or do a total ad boycott and make sure that they don't exist anymore. Because it's annoying and it's hard to take the time to debunk all of their bullshit. And it doesn't really work well because they're still doing well in terms of the numbers. So now I just want to like rage quit and say, well, just get them off air somehow, any, any, any way we possibly can. It is a whiny little bitch thing to do. And listen, I agree with all of these outlets that Fox News is terrible. They're a cancer on this country. They actively misinform people and they actively make Republican voters dumber. For sure. 
any criticism. You can't get vituperative enough with how much I hate Fox News. You just can't. But this does make you look like whiny little bitches and you're cheating and it's a shortcut in the dialogue and you just want to get them off air by any means necessary. The third point is this. CNN and MSNBC have also done a terrible job and they've hurt the dialogue. They've pushed for war with Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan and others. They oftentimes do propaganda for the Pentagon and intelligence agencies and the deep state. They, uh, they did Russiagate, which you could argue definitely pushes a kind of bigotry. It without a doubt does that. And we've seen things that look like out and out bigotry, anti-Russian bigotry from like Maddow, for, for example, among others. Um, most of these outlets, CNN definitely, MSNBC a little less because they have Ali Velshian who does a good job on Israel-Palestine. But most of the hosts in mainstream media side with Biden on the issue of Gaza, side with Israel as they massacre civilians. If you're going to call for censorship for anybody, isn't that worthy of censoring? You're, you're pushing for war crimes and terrorism, isn't that worthy of censoring? But no, they leave them alone. So that's also unacceptable. If you're going to censor, you have to come up with specific things you're against, specific things you think should be censored. Shouldn't advocating for war crimes and advocating, advocating for terrorism, wouldn't that make the list? Or conspiracy theories. Again, advocating for conspiracy theories. Sorry, we're going to ban you. Okay, well, CNN and MSNBC have their own conspiracy theories like Russiagate. And then the fourth thing is, once you open this door, there will also be right-wing boycotts and if, if you have companies giving in to all these boycotts, it's going to eliminate outlets and shows that you like. So it, it's like these lefties act like they're offended at Fox News and they're the only ones who are offended at anything. And so therefore the advertisers should act. But there are people who are equally offended by my show on the right. Some Ted Cruz fan would look at my show and be mortified and they would want to ban me. They would be outraged. They would be offended. You know, some of the things that the right wants to eliminate are like, any anti-religious stuff, any anti-conservative stuff, any jokes at their expense, they get all bent out of shape. So I just don't want to open this door of censoring and deplatforming and boycotting because once you open that door, it's going to apply to fucking everybody. We saw this happen already on Twitter. Okay, you banned some far right-wing kooks. Great. Well, then they turned around and immediately banned Antifa. I don't want that happening. Reddit banned the Donald subreddit. A lot of these Media Matters folks and others would cheer that. Yay! Then they also banned Chapo Trap House, a left-wing podcast. It never ends where you want it to end. It doesn't. So I just think, I honestly think this is silly. I think this is silly. And I I'm sorry, I'm just against, not only am I against um, censorship and deplatforming on principle, I'm also, I think I'm against ad boycotts too. I, I think I am. And, but I don't think it's going to work. And again, even if it did work, final, final point, and it's just reiterating an earlier point, even if it did work, some shitty fucking network would come and take the place and push the same kind of terrible propaganda. And you're right back to square one. And even if you ban them, then another one will come up. You can't ban an ideology and you can't ban the commentary that like at least 30% of the country agrees with. You can't do that. You can't just... Make polite society only reflect what you want it to reflect. The reality is the conservatives and the Republicans live among us. Some of them we're never going to convince, but the ones who are convincible, we should try to convince. And this is the last way you should ever do that. Because it makes you look like a whiny bitch, because you kind of are.